Here we're looking at the settings menu for Color Space, which is within the main profiling window and is where you can set the various values that are used throughout the profiling um, options. So initially we've got target, gamut, EOTF. At the moment they're all linked, they will be separate, so you will have uh, gamut and EOTF gamma, but for now they're all interlinked. So REC709 is uh, the fixed REC709 gamut with target gamma EOTF of 2.4. Um, we can call it a gamma in this case because it's a pure power law, um, but EOTF is a, you know, the real technical term for uh, any target um, electro-optical transfer function. Um, if you don't want to use the default, then you can make your own. So in the library, go into the default presets, uh, REC709, modify, and you can change any of the parameters that you want, give it a new name and save it. Once you've done that, I won't do it just because I've got loads already, um, they will appear in the user color spaces. Um, here, so here we've got 2.3, gamma, a couple of them, 2.6, just a couple of weird named ones. And they appear in our target list exactly the same. There you go, new name, test, new 2.35G, so on. We'll stick with our default 709. Subspace um, gives you the ability to target a smaller color space than the um, main target. So, for example, if you're targeting uh, UHD Rec 2020, um, you can select to work uh, to, say, DCI P3. Um, so you can actually see if your calibrated Rec 2020 display is capable of actually meeting DCI P3 color space requirements, being that most Rec 2020 material is presently graded to P3. And you can define whether you are um, working to a subspace code value or a target space code value. And again, the gamut in EOTF will be separated, uh, but at the moment are interlocked. And um, if you're not sure about uh, the capabilities of something like um, subspace, you can actually use the existing light space um, user guide because the functionality is pretty much the same. So if we go into the Light Illusion website, uh, go to Light Space Guides, and if we look at uh, profiling, um, we look at display characterization, um, here we have color subspace. And if we go down there, it will give you the information on what subspace actually does and how it's used. It also then links you to how to use it for this alternate patch sets, which is where you can actually um, calibrate a display that is um, already pre-calibrated to a wider gamut that it can actually do. And yes, that is the JVC projectors pretty much as is shown here. That actually says it's an extracted space which uses exactly the process I just showed you for a new color space, but this time it takes a profile, so if we say something like um, uh, the Convision one, we've used that before, let's go to that one, the, X, the um, full raw, um, and you can see that it, it's um, a, a much larger color space than um, Rec 709 other than in blue, but if we actually select to uh, modify that, we can use Extract Space to build um, a new matrix that uses the primary values from the display as well as extracting an average uh, gamma EOTF. So uh, you can use that within your subspace um, uh, as your uh, subspace target. Okay, below that we have, um, oh actually just while we're here, should a bit of fun, we were looking at obviously just a, a diff Fault uh, uh, color space in the sense of uh, LG Rec 709 LG HLG Rec 709 um, uh, PQ, but also here we have cameras because we have the camera option on this license. So you can see a, a standard Rec 709 camera um, ARRI. Here we go. The ARRI gamut. Um, what else have we got? Um, red. There you go. Just show you. <laughs> some of the, the interesting um, differences of the various cameras. Anyway, back to uh, Rec. 709. Um, Lumens target. Um, 
m like most of the settings in, in Color Space, they, they are, are remembered. So if you modify them when you start up next time, the modified values will become your kind of defaults uh, within limits. Um, but here we have standard for um, standard dynamic range of 100 nits max, 0 nits minimum, both for the target and the profile data, because this is a new profile. It has no measured data, so it, it's just got the default stuck in as a starting point. So if we want to um, actually chase our, our target and know what this display is, is preset to, so we can use that when we're defining uh, things such as gamma, we need to connect a probe. So we'll connect a, an I1. We'll stick up a, uh, a color patch. There we go. And we can use auto to automatically update the min and max values. And there you go. And that gives you obviously the uh, contrast ratio now. Um, in the profile Luma, these values will update every time we take a min and max value, either manually or via a um, automated profile sequence. So if we measure black and measure white, those values are now updated here. You can see they're basically the same. The display is pretty stable. Um, the up arrow will take these values and replace the values here with them. So if we were to manually put our target back to the defaults of 100 and 0, you can see it's gone, they've gone yellow. And what that's telling you is that these targets are not what the uh, display is actually capable of doing, not what the display's actual response is. So that, that kind of power yellow just lets you know that there is a, a differential going on here. If we hit the up, up arrow, it just transfers these da this data into these boxes. If we click the auto, every time we remeasure a minimum or maximum, so a black or white, um, in the measure or in a, a fixed profile, then it will actually automatically push those values back up. So again, if we default these back to 100 and 0, go in here and we measure white and measure black, when we go back it's been repopulated because the values we've just measured have been pushed up and will be done every time so that when you're uh, setting things like uh, gamma and, and, and so on, um, you, the values will continually update every time you make a manual adjustment of the black or white point. Okay, stabilization gives you the ability to add a patch in between every read patch. So it inserts a patch that is not read for the duration that you set and of the uh, the colour that you choose to set. Black is the most logical because you're looking to cool the display down uh, in between taking brighter patch readings. You've then got the patch size and background colour controls. These are either set via your own custom values using area as well as positioning uh, for X and Y in percentages or from our preset. So L2 is 10%, which is fairly much the standard for things like uh, um, HDR. You can obviously set the background color as well. Um, again, black is obviously the most common, but if you want to do kind of a mid-gray or something, then you can obviously set that uh, and that will become your background color. Now, when we open our patch window, um, at the minute, it's actually all the same color because when the floating patch window is not full screen, uh, the size value is ignored. If I double click it, you can see that it goes to the uh, patch size that we've set with the background color that we've set. If you're using um, an external patch generator that can do APL or similar, um, then obviously that will also become controllable via the hardware controls for your patch generator. But these are for the internal patch generator, but also for setting things like size and that for external patch generators. Then we've got uh, patch scale and resolution. Um, patch scale is the range that you're uh, working to. So data range 0255, video range, or video range with super white uh, and, and so on. Um, 
or you can actually set obviously custom and set your own values that you want uh, manually. The uh, resolution at the minute, this is just for the uh, GUI controls. Uh, inside color space, it's actually floating point, so it's irrelevant. Uh, but at the moment, we're actually working 8 bits for our GUI, but it will have the option of 8 bit, 10 bit, 12 bit, what have you. Um, but at the moment, uh, we just use 8 bit because it actually makes no difference because you're setting a value. So long as the value sent to the display is the same as the value set here, everything works, irrespective of the actual bit depth um, of the patch generator and display in use. We've then got um, pre-roll CSV sequence, um, a comma separated variable, so an Excel sheet basically, which allows you to um, run a patch sequence in advance of starting to take readings so that you can warm up a display and you just navigate to um, the, the sequence that you want to use, so uh, memory list random, and there you go, it's in the list and it will now run that before we do a, a profile with the time set per patch. Just deletes it. Um, the, this will be a, a library at the minute, it's just, the, just one at a time. Uh, and then lastly, we have active LUT. So if you have a LUT in the system, so let's just load in a, uh, a LUT. Uh, film emulation, there we go. And there you go, so if I just double click that. It's a, um, a standard film emulation LUT and we're just going to use that as an example so now when we go into active LUT it's there and you can see the change in the patch color immediately because the patch color is now being pushed through the um, the LUT before it is sent to the uh, the display um, you can use that for advanced calibration of, of uh, uh, non-standard displays or for the verification of um, a, a LUT that you've made before you upload it into the display or the LUT box. I think that pretty much covers the uh, settings menu.